Good afternoon, everybody. Thank God for another day among the land of the living. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Uh, I want to do a quick video um, on the resurrection and rapture. We know that Jesus is coming again soon. And the Bible teaches that when he comes, he's going to gather together the elect from the four winds of the earth. And he's going to... Um, Take them from, from one end of heaven unto the other. One end of heaven is down here on earth to the other is in heaven. And we know that in um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, it talks about the rapture. It says this, 4 and 13 of 1 Thessalonians says this, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus did, died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Amen. Uh, verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming. Of the Lord. That is the key word, the coming, T H E, coming. The, his main coming, when he comes again, we're going to see him. And whenever you're trying to uh, figure out when the rapture happens, it's always going to be at the coming. The coming is the rapture, it's the resurrection and the rapture. It says here in verse 15 For this we say by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, that's his coming, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay, those who have died in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with, with them in the clouds, in the to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. But it's the coming. Back up in verse um, 16, I believe it is, or verse 15. For this we say by the word of the Lord, verse 15, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming. So the coming is tied together with the rapture. When we go over to, and whenever you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, um, Let's go over to Matthew, for example. We're talking about the coming. The coming is the resurrection and the rapture. When Jesus comes again, he's going to gather the elect from the four winds of the earth. Verse uh, chapter, I just read a couple more verses. We'll go over to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, um, the disciples came. They asked Jesus what would be the signs of the end of the world and um, the sign of his coming. Uh, Matthew 24 and 1 says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came unto him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, Do you not see all these things? There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what? shall be the sign of your coming, your coming, okay, and the end of the world, your coming, the coming, his coming, it's all the same event, okay, um, and so when you skip on down, Jesus goes on, he starts to tell them all the different things that would go on, he gets into the great tribulation, okay, and then when you get down to verse 30, I believe it's uh, 29, Matthew 24 and verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and, the, and they shall then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's the coming right there when he comes again. Verse 31, and he shall send his angels. This is the res or the rapture, the resurrection and rapture with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven. That's down here 
to the other. That's to heaven. If you read a mark, it says one end of the earth or the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Okay, so what we see here, we see the coming, his coming. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, um, we'll see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. When you go over to, we'll read one more verse. One thing we need to understand when considering the timing of the resurrection and rapture, it's at his coming. Okay, Christ was the first fruits. We're going to read here in 1 Corinthians 15 and 23, I believe it is. Chapter 15 starts out with the gospel message, and then it goes on, and it's all about the resurrection and rapture after that. Uh, ver chapter 15, verse 20 says this. I'll read on to verse 24. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, that's by Adam, by man, by man came also the resurrection of the dead, that's Jesus Christ. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now listen to this, verse 23. But every man in his own order, okay, every man in his own order. First, it says this, Christ the first fruits. So Christ was the first fruits, and those that rose with him, okay. Afterward, they who are Christ at his coming. We're talking about the resurrection rapture. It's at his coming. Okay. So we know that when trying to figure out the timing of the rapture, we need to always go to when is the coming? Because when the coming happens, that's when the resurrection rapture takes place. Second Thessalonians chapter, we'll read this and that'll be it. Second Thessalonians chapter two. It says this. It's talking about the gathering and the coming of the Lord. Chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians says this. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The coming. It's the coming. When he comes again, that's when the resur resurrection rapture will take place. Okay. Brethren, by the, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. That is the resurrection and rapture. Verse 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind by or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, the resurrection and rapture, the gathering together of the saints, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, a departure from the faith. Some try to say that that is a... Um, the departure is the res or this is the rapture, but it do that doesn't line up. It's a departure from the faith, a falling away from truth. Okay, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. So there's got to be a come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. That is the antichrist. Verse four, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God and claims showing himself that he is God. Okay, so that there is telling us there's going to be a falling away first before the day of the Lord, before the coming of the Lord and our gathering to him. There's going to be a departure from the faith. We see that taking place right now, but it's going to get real bad. A falling away from truth, a falling away from the faith, and the man of sin is revealed. Listen, as you read scripture throughout all the prophets, the gospels, the Apostle Paul, the resurrection and rapture. It's in Daniel. You can see in Daniel. You see it all over the Bible. The resurrection and the rapture are tied to his coming. Christ was the first fruits. And when he comes again, he, the resurrection and rapture will take place. That will be the first, those the, that will be considered the first resurrection. The next resurrection is not until after the millennial kingdom. So when trying to figure out the timing of the rapture, you always have to go to the coming of the Lord, his coming. That's when the resurrection and rapture takes place. So you have many people that you know, believe in a pre-trib rapture. That's the popular view, um, at least here in America. Uh, you have uh, the, the camp that believes in a mid-trib uh, post-trib, pre-wrath, 
Me personally, I believe it's very clear. The resurrection and rapture takes place at the coming of the Lord, according to the scriptures. And the coming of the Lord takes place immediately after the tribulation of those days. I believe in a pre-wrath resurrection rapture. I believe we'll be here during the uh, tribulation period, or the final seven years. And I believe we'll see everything takes place. I believe we'll see the Antichrist stand in the temple of God and claim to be God. I believe the mark of the beast will take place. I believe we'll see the two prophets. We do not go through the wrath. God does not pour out his wrath upon his children. And I believe the wrath takes place in about year six um, of that final seven years. So, look, there's many, there's plenty of different views. And, you know, in my opinion, we need to plan for the worst and hope for the best. Pay attention to Israel. They're back in the land. They're talking about making animal sacrifices again. They're talking about a temple getting rebuilt. You hear about the red heifer. We know they're going to begin to make those animal sacrifices. I believe we're going to see that final invasion, that Ezekiel 38, 39 invasion led by Gog, who is the Antichrist. And I believe that that final invasion, the battle in, um, uh, in Ezekiel 38, 39 is the final invasion led by Gog, the Antichrist. And I believe that is... Um, Jesus will come back and fight that battle at the very end of it. And I believe that is the battle of Armageddon. So pay attention to Israel. That's our timepiece. Uh, things are getting bad, just like the Bible says they would. Wars, rumors of wars, you know, peace being taken from the earth. We're seeing it. famines and pestilences. Um, you know, the world is upside down. And the bottom line is Jesus is coming soon. And we need to be ready. Uh, he could come for you today. You know, we talk about end time prophecy uh, and things that are going to take place. We see stuff lining up most rapidly. But what would you do if you breathe your last breath today? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? God made a way for us. He loved us so much. He made a way that we could be saved and escape eternal wrath, eternal death, the punishment we deserve. We can escape the wrath of God. We can escape that eternal punishment, hell, lake of fire. And instead of that, which we deserve that, but God sent his only begotten son into the world to die for the sins of all mankind. And because of the death, burial, and resurrection, our sins can be forgiven us. Our sin that's been paid in full. And instead of going to hell for eternity, what we deserve if we believe and place our faith and trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we trust in him to take us to eternal glory, trust in Jesus to deliver you from eternal wrath and take you to eternal glory. That's the bottom line. We're going to live forever. We have a heaven to gain, a hell to escape. God made a way. We broke God's law. Eternal death, hell like fire is our punishment. But the good news is this. Jesus came and he paid our sin debt in full. Now we're being given a choice, an option to, instead of go to hell forever, we can instead be delivered from that and, and go into eternal glory and live with God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all the beautiful people of God that place their faith and trust in Jesus. All you have to do is receive the gift, and you receive the gift by repentance to God, believe in the gospel message, believe in that this is true, believe in that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried and rose again the third day. And then after you believe mentally with your mind, you believe with your heart. And that is to confess him as your Lord and Savior, to believe and put all your faith and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Trust in him to deliver you from wrath and trust in him to take you to eternal glory. Choose you this day whom you will serve. We don't know if today could be our last day. So God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Jesus is coming soon. We want to be ready. And we want to be ready if today is our last day. So repent to God. Place your faith and trust in Jesus. Do the best you can to live for God. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbors yourself. This thing is winding down. Um, God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. God is good. He's worthy to be praised.